Welcome back, Literature fans. My name is Mary and Elena. Today we will do Binomial Slugfest, and we will analyze Norman Wahlberger's uh, famous math problem 10b, and also it's known as uh, a new proof of Cavalieri's formula. So let's recap of uh, what I did previously in my previous video. And basically, we're looking at the curve of uh, y equals x to the n and we're using what i call Wahlberger translation setup which is x equals one plus t so imagine here's the x axis and superimposed offset by one is a t axis and the t axis goes from one to alpha of course, on the x-axis, you see 0, 1, and 1 plus alpha. And since this is a y equals x to the n, so you got 1 plus alpha to the n. That's our rise. And 1 plus alpha is a run. Okay. And so the box would be 1 plus alpha to the n times 1 plus alpha. And this diagonal would be 1 plus alpha to the n divided by 1 plus alpha. Okay, um, we are using Wahlberger's linearity, additivity, translation, dilation, normalization, and uh, there are other properties you can think of like superposition. And we're looking at area and slope. And in my, uh, my scheme of things, I always do area and slope together in one video. It may be busy, but it's, uh, it's worthwhile, I think. That's, that's the way I do it. So, um, okay, uh, this is a review. Um, these are box operators, essentially. And we are kind of looking at the system uh, sort of from the X perspective, which is uh, dilation, you could say, or the difference of dilation, namely this. We're trying to get this area here. Uh, we have to always start with zero in quadrature. So the way to get to this wedge is, you know, dilation relation. You have to take this big wedge and subtract this little wedge because everything has to start at zero. That's from the X perspective. And of course, from the translation perspective, the T axis, you know, your T starts here and you've got a bunch of functions which everything starts at zero to alpha. And so these have uh, particular areas as well as slopes associated with them. So that's how we attack it. So dilation relationship, it's this big wedge to the little wedge. I and mean, the difference gives us this area here from one to one plus alpha on the x-axis or zero to a on the t-axis. Okay, um, let's do area first. So area is uh, basically a box operator. It's k sub n, this constant that we're after, <clears throat> times 1 plus alpha to the n times 1 plus alpha. <clears throat> That's a box times this k sub n factor. And that gives you the area, this big area here. And then we have to subtract this little area. Well, its box is basically 1 times 1 times k sub n. Okay? So that's from the x perspective. And then we're saying that that area has to be the area of these little functions from the t perspective. And so that's another set of box operators, and that looks like, like, like this, okay? We've done this in the previous video, go back. Um, but essentially, that's what we have. And so we have lots of things to expand. Oh, also this uh, y equals 1 plus alpha to the n. When we expand it, we get this big... Uh, ugly number. It's kind of busy, isn't it? You, you look at this diagram and it is busy. 
But we are looking at things from basically the T perspective, that's the translation perspective, and also from the X perspective, namely this difference of, of this dilation relationship. And so things have to add up. So the difference between this big area minus this little one must equal in terms of areas, these little areas that we have from the perspective. And similarly from uh, for the slope, you know, we're after the tangent slope, which from the X perspective, it's nothing more than rise divided by run is diagonal times C sub n. Well, that must equal these individual slopes from the T perspective. And so we play, we play these together, one leverages against the other, and that's how, that's how we are approaching this subject. Okay, and so there's a number of, uh, you know, these end up basically binomial expansions. I've done that in my previous video, but you're welcome to do it again. Um, anyways, um, I'm not going to repeat it. You've seen that before, but it is, we're expanding we're expanding. So let's uh, zoom in now and look at the work of uh, Norman Wahlberger. Okay, well, so let's uh, look at the work of Norman Wahlberger, particularly his famous math problem 10b. There's his uh, YouTube uh, video. There's the reference, big shout out. And you can also Google it under famous math problem 10b by Norman Wahlberger, right? So there's an arm. This is slide eight and nine. And then, of course, you have a zoom of slides eight and nine right here because I want to I want to zoom in on it. But basically, um, he's calling scale invariance. That's dilation. Um, he's got a number of properties. I, I highly suggest that you do watch his video and then compare it to my work. But Slide nine, this is the one that I really want to uh, zoom in on. And uh, basically, this setup right here, this is our dilation relationship. This is our the difference between the big wedge and this little wedge from the x perspective, right, times a sub n. He uses a sub n. I use k sub n, same thing. Uh, also, he uses... The letter C, I use the letter alpha. That's my variable. That's the, I, I use the poly number. That's the real poly number approach. But anyways, uh, here's the dilation relationship. And notice that when you expand this 1 plus C to the n plus 1, um, and then you have this minus 1, well, that's going to cancel out right away. So he cancels it out, and all you're left with is C terms, C squared terms, C to the N, all the way up to C to the N plus 1, right? And, of course, the whole thing times A sub N, okay? Um, and then he leverages that against the uh, translation, translation invariance, okay? That's, that's, those are the little functions that you saw earlier that I showed. Essentially, it's C0 times A0, then N times C squared times A1, N choose 2, C third, A2, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to C to the N plus 1 times A to the N. And just to be correct, Norman should have canceled this one out because these are equal, okay? That's what he's leveraging. He's leveraging this dilation and additivity kind of a property against this translation and linearity property. And so A sub n times C to the n plus 1, this one, We'll cancel this one, right? That's you get two cancellations in the area. Uh, the first one is on the, the one cancels the one when you expand it, and the second one is on the other side. So you're left with c terms, c square terms, c third terms, etc., etc., which have to match c terms, c square terms, etc. 
And so from these alone, you know, you got n plus 1 c times a to the n must equal c times a0. a0 is 1. So from that we get a sub n equals 1 over n plus 1. It's that simple. Okay. Now let's look at it in terms of poly numbers. We are now viewing the situation from poly numbers. We're back to my notation where I use k sub n and alpha. Now these are my setup. So here's the setup. y equals x to the n. And we're saying our translation is 1 plus alpha. And so in terms of poly numbers, that's 1 times alpha to the 0 plus 1 times alpha to the 1. These are your alpha levels, okay? That's how poly numbers work. And so 1 plus alpha to the n is this gamma-looking L-shaped thing to the n. That's the way poly numbers work. And when you expand that, uh, this is what you get. Y equals a huge poly number, which can have uh, 50,000 entries, you know, how many you want, uh, basically all the way up to alpha to the n. And it goes like 1 n, n, n minus 1 over 2 factorial, n, n minus 1, n minus 2 over 3 factorial, etc. dot, 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 and then it ends on a 1 at the alpha to the n level. That's translation of our basic this is a translation equation, okay? This is the function, but from the t perspective after we translate. So the binomial expansion does it. And these are essentially uh, your Taylor polynomials. I mean, that's what boils down to. I'll do another video on Taylor, Taylor series and how that relates to translation. It basically is translation. So, uh, Area, yes. Um, what is area? Well, look at this. Um, this is in terms of poly numbers. So this is our, this is a box. This is one. This is a rise times run. Okay. It's times k sub n. So this forms a box. And then this is your in integral. This is the area, the big area, the big wedge. And then minus the little wedge. So we're looking at the dilation relationship right here. And, uh, okay, so that leaves behind this funny looking wedge the, from the T perspective. So let's expand this thing. And then here's k sub n times 1. That's basically k sub n times 1. And n plus 1 times 1, n plus 1, n over 2 factorial, n plus 1, n, n minus 1 over 3 factorial, and so forth, dot, 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 all the way back to 1 at the alpha to the n plus 1, important, n plus 1. Okay, that's when you expand this poly number here, multiplied by k sub n. And then you subtract k sub n times 1. That's that little wedge that we saw. And so that's from the x perspective, and that's kind of a dilation relationship looking at things from x perspective. And that must equal the relationship of the translation, various functions that start at 0 and end at alpha from the t perspective. That's the translation perspective, okay? And those are essentially 0, k0, which we know is 1, k1, we know even that one, it's 1 half times n, k2, n, n minus 1 over 2 factorial, and so forth, dot, 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 all the way to k sub n at the alpha to the n plus 1. Again, compare this poly number to uh, Norman Wahlberger's to my previous. Uh, I think that you know when you see it, 
in terms of these poly numbers, it's so much clearer. That's, that's the whole idea. Okay, so now we're going to massage these poly numbers. So we're back now, and we've uh, massaged these numbers. This was your K0, K1, K2, K3, etc. Uh, so you can see this is now a one-half, a one-third, a one-fourth. The first thing we need to do is our cancellations, right? Um, K1 cancels this one and this one. K sub n cancels K sub n right here. Okay. Whew. Um, and so now we're uh, ready to massage this further. And so we can see that this one third with a two factorial and then one fourth with a, you know, Three factorial, well, now. so I've massaged these uh, poly numbers, and basically we have, uh, you know, n2 over 2, and n, n minus 1 over 3 factorial, n, n minus 1, n minus 2 over 4 factorial, dot, 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 and of course this is a 0, this was canceled, and then this is 0. Cancelled with this one, right? So that's that. So um, we need to do one more massaging, and that is on this side. We need to bring the n plus 1 out because it's common to all of the remaining factors. These are 0. So we're back to here. We brought the n plus 1 out here because it's common to all of them, and it's constant. And so, essentially, now we have it in the form such that this giant poly number matches exactly this giant poly number. They are identical. I've massaged it to the point where they literally are identical. Okay, this is the K0 level, K1, etc. And... Uh, you can see that uh, K sub n times n plus 1 is equal to 1 times this poly number. So these cancel out completely, and you get K sub n equals 1 over n plus 1. Pretty good, huh? And a similar kind of uh, logic happens now to the, uh, the slope, right? So we have with slope, um, basically, this is a diagonal, your rise divided by run, times c sub n. That's from the x perspective, which is really c sub n to the n minus 1. When you expand that, that's binomial expansion, you get 1, n minus 1 over 1 factorial n n minus 2 over 2 factorial n n minus 1 n minus 3 over 3 factorial dot 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 all the way to 1 at the alpha to the n minus 1. All right, you can see an interesting similarity between these expansions. And so that's looking at it from the x perspective. And of course, uh, from the t perspective, that slope is is uh, is equal to the slopes the superposition of uh, the slopes from each of these functions little functions of t so that basically looks like uh, c1 times n c2 n n minus 1 over 2 factorial etc so far all the way to c to the n at the alpha to the n minus 1 and we know that c1 is is basically 1, right? And so from the alpha to the 0 level, we get c sub n times 1 is equal to n, from which we get c sub n equals n, right? That's pretty simple. And now we're going to plug in since we know that c sub n is n, let's just plug that into all of these 
C2, C3, C4. So, and you can see that, uh, okay, um, this was C2, C3, C4, right? And look, uh, there's 2 over 2 factorial, 3 over 3 factorial, 4 over 4 factorial. So it, essentially it brings down this factorial. So basically um, we reduced the factorial. Um, now it's beginning to match closer to here. There's one more thing that we need to do. Oh, we forgot to do our cancellation, didn't we? That's, that's important. The slope has basically one cancellation at the end. The uh, area has two cancellations at both bookends, uh, these two. And so let's bring the n out, all right? And so we can do that, and basically and that's what we have, right? And so now we have it in a form that matches completely. Look, here's the alpha to the zero level. And then you got n minus 1 over 1 factorial, right? n, n minus, n minus 1, n minus 2 over 2 factorial. n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 over 3 factorial. Dot, 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 all the way back until... You know, you got your zero here. And so, look, uh, because these are now identical, you can completely cancel out this polynomial. And what you get is C sub n is equal to n. The relationship holds. So you can see that the, the way the algebra cranks is, is very similar to the area. All of these things are, you know, that's, once you've done it for one, there's a kind of a pattern that develops. And so instead of information overflow, you know, being overwhelmed by area and slope, you're beginning to see, you know, there's a pattern. And once you learn it for one, you can apply it to the other. And it cranks kind of a similar way. So, hmm, interesting that... Uh, from the algebra perspective, uh, the derivative and the integral are very similar, you know. Here you divide by, you know, one power, so it lowers by one power. Here in the area, it raises by one power. Interesting. So this matches the work of uh, Norman Wahlberger. So I think what we'll do is we'll end it on... Uh, Norman's um, note. And that is Cavalieri's formula. So we have established Cavalieri's formula for a general n, natural number n. We're using the binomial theorem here for natural numbers. We've done it without any infinite processes. We've done it without any sophisticated concept of the integral. All what we've really used is the five properties that the integral should satisfy if it's going to act like an area. So even if you had now a very physical, intuitive, no-nonsense approach and said, look, Norman, let's just pretend this is an area. What's the integral of uh, x cubed dx from 0 to a? Well, I would just argue we're just talking about basic properties of areas. These are five basic properties of areas. The integral has to be uh, a to the fourth over four. It's a high school calculation without any infinite processes, without any use of real numbers. We only use the rational numbers. The workhorse is really the binomial theorem. Yeah. Binomial theorem is really the crux of the matter. It's perhaps a bit of an exaggeration, but not much of an exaggeration to say that calculus is an application of the binomial theorem. There's some truth in that. All right, this argument wouldn't be accessible to Cavalieri. If you went back to Cavalieri's time and I showed it to him, he would probably go, yes, of course, why didn't I think of that? It's not so different from the kinds of manipulations and thinking that he was doing. All right, that was well said. Uh, I'm Marion Alena. And remember, before there was calculus, there was
quadrature.